from over here. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a, a great honor uh, to be here this morning. This is the first time I think that uh, I or Ryanair have ever been invited to a conference by the European Union, because as though most of you know, the European Union spends most of its time either suing me, torturing me, criticizing me or condemning me for lowering the cost of air travel all over Europe and making life so really difficult for their favorite airlines, which as we all know are the high fare airlines like Air France, British Airways and um, Lufthansa, who must of course be protected at all, pol at, at all costs because they are the future of Europe. The future of Europe lies in people being forced to pay 800 euros for one hour flights across the continent. The future of Europe lies in people being forced to pay fuel surcharges for the right to travel on Europe's best airlines run by the Germans, the French uh, and the British. Well, sorry, we like to disagree which is why I think a conference on innovation is so important. Because if you look at the mess that Europe is in and you look at the mess that the European economy is in, there's only one way out of it. And it's not going to be a summit of European politicians. It's certainly not going to be a conference held in Brussels where the last innovative idea came in 1922, I think. Uh, innovation is going to be the way for the European economy to grow, to develop, to create new jobs and that's the way out of the mess we're in and that's why I think it's so important that we have four young people here today. I'm kind of a little bit nervous that we've brought them to Brussels where I'm afraid that their innovative streak or their spark of innovation might be dulled by a long lunch, an afternoon asleep, uh, followed by an early finish and then that they'll all become, God help us, politicians or bureaucrats in Brussels and therefore do nothing to add to the, uh, to the sum of humankind. So I urge you, uh, as quickly as you possibly can, get the hell out of Brussels, <laughs> go back to your countries and try to stay away from here as, as much as is humanly possible. Because Brussels, if those of you who know the Star Wars trilogy, this is the evil empire. <laughs> the Berlaymont is the Death Star where any hint of innovation is left at the door as you walk in to meet with bureaucrats and politicians who you can always tell when they're telling lies because usually their lips will be moving. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I thought what we'd do is give you a quick, for those of you who haven't heard of Ryanair, Europe's mo or Brussels' most beloved airline, we'd give you a quick, very short, brief summary on uh, what Ryanair is and what Ryanair does. Uh, Ryanair has, uh, is the most innovative airline in the world. I accept that that's not setting the bar very high, given that the airlines around the world have failed to innovate probably since Wilbur and Orville Wright first flew in 1912. And the reason they failed to innovate and the reason why the airline industry is in such a mess is because it's run by politicians and bureaucrats who like nothing more than to pass another regulation when something is working. I remember Ronald Reagan's quote in the US that you know, the, the economic policy of government and bureaucrats is always, if it moves, tax it. If it keeps moving, regulate it. And if it stops moving, subsidize it. Uh, so, uh, and I think that's a policy that much beloved in Brussels. So what makes Ryanair different? We, are the low, we offer the lowest fares, we have the lowest seat costs in Europe. Nobody comes close. We guarantee no fuel surcharges. So while Lufthansa and Air France and BA are telling you, oh, next year is going to be more expensive, we have to put up fuel surcharges because the price of fuel is rising. It's a bit, it comes as a mystery to them that actually the airline needs to buy fuel. So, oh, we need a fuel surcharge. We guarantee no fuel surcharges. And as a result of that, we're by far and away Europe's most popular airline with 75 million passengers. Uh, currently, we offer 1,300 routes across 47 bases. I'm going to a new country at lunchtime today to announce our 48th base next year. And we have the best customer service in Europe. Now, our customer service doesn't consist of giving you fine wines and big fat seats for your big fat backside <laughs> or giving you frequent flyer points so that you'll travel with us again at your employer's expense. Our customer service consists of three things that people really want. An on a cheap flight, an on-time flight, and then we promise not to lose your bags in between. And as a result of that formula, which seems very simple, yet is incredibly revolutionary within the airline industry, we have delivered 27 years of continuous growth and we're now the world's favorite airline. We carry more international scheduled passengers than any other uh, airline. What makes us different from every other European airline are fares. 
At the moment, our average fare is 50 euros for a one-hour, 15-minute flight across Europe. 20 years ago, that figure would have been about 500 euros. And if you look what British Airways, Air France and Lufthansa are charging today, it's about six, seven times Ryanair's price. As a result, we continue to grow all over Europe. Much to the uh, upset of the European Commission, we continue to succeed, whereas the airlines that they'd like to protect and uh, foster as much as they can continue to decline. The IATA figures this year will carry 75 million pass international passengers, Lufthansa 44 million, EasyJet 37 million, Air France 30 million, and British Airways, which used to be the world's favourite, now isn't even the UK's favourite airline anymore. We are. In terms of where we fly, 47 bases across Europe, 160 airports, 27 countries. We have 1,500 daily departures, 93% of them on time. We don't have strikes, so the only time your flight would be cancelled is when there's bad weather at an airport or it's not safe to fly. And in Brussels, Charleroi, this, by the way, is, not, is a, an airport to the south of Brussels. It's not very well known here among the, in, in the European Commission. Um, where they all fly to the high cost, frequently delayed Zaventem. I don't know what happened to my screen. Oh yeah, the screen is still on. It was very interesting. When I was coming out for the conference this week, again, as I say, I'm a, I'm a Brussels conference virgin. So I, never having been to a Brussels conference before, somebody in the commission very kindly sent me a note saying, we'd love to pay for your flight and, to you, and, and your hotel and your taxi and we'll send a limo to collect you and everything else. Said, Jesus. Which for Ryanair is, you know, remarkably, uh, uh, is an entirely new... So I said, that's fine, I'll be arriving in Brussels, Charleroi, on the Ryanair flight from Dublin on uh, Monday evening. Uh, I'll be uh, travelling into the centre of town, and if you could uh, find me a hotel, well and good. The Novo Hotel will do fine, but, you know, whatever, wherever the Commission stay. We got an email back last Friday saying, I'm sorry, the Commission can't pay for a Ryanair flight because there's a ban on low fare flights within the Commission. <laughs> To then be told, we can't get you a taxi from Brussels Charleroi Airport because we, don't, we only send taxis to Brussels Airport, uh, but we can provide you with a hotel in downtown Brussels. So as long as you can uh, find your way or fly to uh, Brussels Charleroi. What they would have done though, if I flew on my competitor Aer Lingus, the flag carrier, into Brussels Airport at about 10 times the cost, the Commission would have been happy to reimburse that airfare at nine times the cost of the Ryanair flight. They'd have been happy to send the limo out to Brussels airport where apparently limo drivers in Brussels only know how to get to Zaventem. They've never heard of Brussels Charleroi uh, and they'd provide me with the, uh, the, the hotel accommodation as well. So again, I say to the four entrepreneurs, the first thing you must remember today is to get the hell out of Brussels as quickly as you can or any <laughs> streak of innovation and, uh, in, in, uh, and intelligence will be beaten out of you. Uh, by Brussels. And so, how has Ryanair innovated within an airline industry that continuously loses money? Well, we come with a very simple thing. One of the great strengths of Ryanair is nobody in the airline has ever worked in an airline before. So none of us came to the airline going, well, we have to give people free drinks, otherwise they won't fly with us. And we have to give them shitty food that they can't eat, otherwise they won't fly with us. We also go, why don't we just scrap the free bloody drinks, get rid of the awful meals, and just give people lower fares? And surprise, surprise, it works. And what we've discovered, which is a very revolutionary concept, which I urge on the four young innovators, is that actually lower prices beats higher prices every time. Unless you work in the Commission, where, of course, by law, you can only buy higher prices, because <laughs> let's face it, the European taxpayer is going to pay for it anyway. Getting rid of travel agents, who are this useless intermediary who charge costs typically about 20% of your ticket price, also works if you pass on those savings to the consumer by encouraging the consumer to book on the internet. And not alone do we get you to book on the internet, we now have you checking in on the internet as well. Bigger aircraft enables us to offer more seats, enables us to offer lower prices. You get a kind of a recurring theme here, lower prices, lower prices, lower prices whereas the Commission would prefer higher prices, more, bigger subsidies, uh, and uh, more delays. Avoidable charges change behaviour. We're famous in the industry at the moment for being the first airline to introduce a charge for checked-in bags. Drives people nuts. Well, because everybody knows in the airline business that when Moses came down from the mountaintop, the first commandment was, thou shalt not commit murder, and the second commandment is, thou shalt have an inalienable right to check in a bag on an airline free of charge. Well, we don't think so. <laughs> And the reason why, because this is the most useless service ever invented by mankind. We take your bags from you on departure so that we can carry them here and give them back to you on arrival. Unless, of course, you flew British Airways, in which case we lose 50% of them in between. <laughs>
We think a much better way of doing this is, why don't you take your bag with you yourself? <laughs> and then if you lose it, you go find it. <laughs> it also means, though, that when you go to the airport, you will not waste one hour of your life standing there like a lemming in a check-in queue. <laughs> Where are you going? Here's my... <sighs> this is stupid. On one-hour flights around Europe, you don't need to check in two bags. Ryanair has increased the free uh, carry-on allowance to set to, from 7 to 10 kilos. Bring a carry-on bag. And then instead of coming to the airport two hours before departure, come 30 minutes before departure, go straight through security because you've already checked in on the website, go straight down to the gate, get on the plane and go. And that's what people want. So what we do is we charge for checked-in bags, not because we want your money. We just don't want your bloody checked-in bag. And funnily enough, when, once you get into the discipline, although I accept that Mrs. my wife is incapable of getting into the discipline of travelling with one bag, she needs three, once you get into the discipline of travelling with one carry-on bag, you'll never go back. We guarantee no fuel surcharges. If oil goes to $200 a barrel, there will not be a fuel surcharge in Ryanair. Ryanair would be the only airline still flying in Europe, but I guarantee you there will be no fuel surcharges. Advertising, one of the great innovations in Ryanair. We have in 25 years never used an advertising agency. We don't use PR agencies because we can't afford them. But what we found is that funny advertising beats boring advertising every single time. And PR is miles cheaper than advertising. And the great thing, if you have funny ads and good PR, you can have fun and make yourself well known to uh, the world. This, the one on the right is the famous, uh, the, on the left-hand side is the famous one. When we were first launching in uh, uh, Brussels, Charlois, about 1997, nobody would heard of Brussels, Charlois in Belgium. Nobody would heard of Ryanair in Belgium. So we spent, we sent loads of people over here, visited all the travel agents. Oh, how do we get Ryanair? No, nobody knew us. On the day of the first flight, we ran this ad, which is the mannequin piss, those of you who know uh, your Belgian culture. The Belgian national symbol, as you know, is a very small male genitalia, which says all you need to know about Belgium. <laughs> I, I dread to tell you what the Irish national symbol is, but anyway. So we ran this ad on the first day, pissed <laughs> off at Sabina's high fares, low fares have come to Belgium. Sabina went berserk. They threatened to sue us in the High Court in Brussels over demeaning the Belgian national symbol. We issued a press release saying, we didn't demean the Belgian national symbol. It is a small penis. That is the Belgian national symbol. What? So they took us to the High Court. We then had to go to the High Court in Belgium for demeaning the mannequin piss and Sabine and everything else. We did, announced that we'd give away free tickets to everybody who showed up to support the Ryanair case. There was a riot in the main square in Belgium as we were throwing out free tickets. And our bookings, which had flatlined for three months prior to the takeoff, suddenly went whoosh. Because everybody got on the website, what's this Ryanair Charlois? Woo! Nine euros to Spain, Italy, Germany. Book them. So our bookings went like that. Sabina's bookings went like that. And the history of uh, Belgium, of air travel to and from Belgium, has changed utterly. Because sadly, in Belgium, you're stuck with SN Brussels at or Lufthansa's Belgian subsidiary at Zaventem, whereas at Charleroi we continue to grow and continue to grow rapidly. The next summer we'll offer a 60 routes from Brussels Charleroi. And it's very interesting, the European Commission itself produced a, a table two weeks ago. The 25 fastest growing air, airports in, Euro, in the world last year, there was only one European airport in the world's 25 fastest growing airports. In Europe, the home of innovation, the home of radical transformation, the home of protecting high fare flag carrier airlines. What was the only European airport in the world's top 25 fastest growing airports last year? Brussels South Charleroi, where the Commission won't, travel, won't pay for flights and the, taxi co and the Commission's limos can't find it. One last one in terms of having fun. This again is one of the more innovative things we've done. We produce an in-flight charity calendar every year. This is the 2012 production. Uh, there is a vicious rumour uh, which says that Ryanair pay for models to appear in its charity calendar. I assure you that is entirely untrue. These are all Ryanair cabin crew uh, based uh, at our 27 bases all over Europe. Over 400 of the girls volunteer. Funnily, we had five men volunteered as well, but they didn't make it through the final selection process. <laughs> We sent them down to Lanzarote uh, to do the photography. We produced 10,000 copies. There is only 2,500 copies left, by the way. It's for sale on board and online. We raise about 100,000 euros each year for producing the calendar. And this year, all of the proceeds go to the Deborah Ireland Charity Foundation, which provides uh, holidays for children suffering from the EB skin condition. I do have to, one, to make the question answer session more interesting later on, by the way, I have a couple of prizes for you. We have three free pairs of three 
three free Ryanair flights from Brussels South Charleroi Airport. So if you work for the Commission, you probably will be banned from taking them. But uh, we're going to give away three free flights, Brussels, Madrid, Brussels, Rome, Brussels, Dublin. And I have two copies of the charity calendar, uh, which you can put down into your bag and not be seen leaving the building with later on. <laughs> Uh, so to summarise, uh, the, today we have a seat sale, 9.99, one way, or on our, uh, this is available on 40 of our routes from Brussels South Charleroi, so if you can find a taxi driver or a limo driver in Belgium who knows how to get to Brussels South Charleroi, you can travel in January at this fair on 45 routes uh, all over Europe. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you get innovation in the airline industry. You can fly anywhere in Europe for 10 quid from Brussels Charleroi in November. If without Ryanair, without airline deregulation, that fare would be something closer to 900 euros, not the 9.99 charged by Ryanair, I think. And that's the end of my, uh, the start of my innovation class. And we're now going to hand it over to the people who really matter, which is the four young innovators we have here, who again, I urge, enjoy the presentation today. Don't be nervous. And remember, get the hell out of Brussels as fast as you possibly can <laughs> and back to business. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you uh, very much, Michael. I, I guess you want to get them fast out of Brussels on the Ryanair flight. Um, thanks also for the flattery of the, uh, of the Commission. Uh, I much appreciate it. I tend to remember that it was the Commission who proposed to deregulate the airline business in the first place as part of the single market program, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong on that count uh, No, nope, well. so, but it was 30 years ago and we haven't had any innovation since. Well. 20 years ago, but I guess it means that Ryanair might, might not have existed if, if the Commission hadn't taken that first, uh, first step. But let's go over now, as you said, to the young innovators. <laughs> what is the most commonly used word in association with the euro? No, it's not failure, though it could be. No, it's stability, isn't it? It's impossible to predict the time when confidence will be lost, but it can come quickly. Resorting to buying other paper currencies will not be of much help. 